In this video, we will discuss discretization and case step methods. Let's define what is a mesh. So let's consider an interval, which will be, say, 0 capital T, and let's n be a number, an integer, which is not 0. Then the n plus 1 tuple, t0, tn, will be a mesh of 0, t, if we have t0 equals 0, tn equals n, and in between ti plus 1 greater than ti. So it's really a subdivision of 0, t, of 0 capital T, where t0 is the first 0 and tn uh, is the uh, is capital T. And as you can see, obviously, we have, we have n plus 1 ti's from t0 to tn. The positive uh, number h and t will be, which will be tn plus 1 minus tn, will be called a step. And if it is constant, then that means that, the, 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 that each interval ti, ti plus 1 has the same length, then the mesh will be called regular, and the step is simply denoted ht or h or delta t, and that is what we will be considering in this uh, class most of the time, even though it is possible to adapt everything we're going to do for these uh, steps that can vary uh, and can be interesting to refine the mesh where interesting, th interesting things happen, but we won't really get into that many details in this class. Now, let's uh, define what is a case step method. So, we consider the uh, ODE uh, y prime equals f of t y of t with the initial condition y of t naught equal y naught. So that is the you know what, what we've been considering since uh, for quite a long time now in this chapter. Uh, D is the dimension of the space as we've uh, used before. Uh, we consider the double bar means the norm of on R D, and I would like to uh, remind uh, all of the students that uh, since R D is of finite dimension all of the norms are equivalent. They're not equal, but they're all equivalent, which means that converging in one norm means converging in another norm of RD. Now, as we said, we're going to consider a mesh on 0t, and t0 to tn will be uh, the uh, n plus 1 uh, tuple that will be the mesh. And the function f that we have mentioned earlier for our ODE will be Lipschitz continuous with respect to its second variable. The uh, Lipschitz continuity, Lipschitz constant will be called L, so that will be independent of t. And as uh, we, we saw before, it means thanks to uh, the theorems we've introduced in the section 2 of this chapter that we have uh, uniqueness and existence, provided, of course, that we're also continuous in the first variable. All right, so uh, now that this has been said, let's actually define what is a k-step method. Well, a k-step method will be a sequence, zn, which will be defined with this relation. Uh, the relation is zn plus 1 equals a function of tn, so the you know, the, the value of the, the, the t uh, where, where we're interested at the tn. And then we will consider uh, zn plus 1, which is the, the basically the zn we're trying to compute, zn all the way to zn minus k plus 1. So you're basically uh, looking at all of these z's and you uh, compute zn plus 1. And you define this relation, this relation, and you you are ex you are hoping you are expecting uh, if your ft is properly uh, set, then you're expecting zn to approximate uh, the solution to your ODE at tn. This will be called a k-step method. Now. If you have uh, zn plus 1 that does not appear in your function ft, then the method will be called explicit. And of course, everybody prefers, would prefer, uh, you know, to have 
an explicit method because this way it's really an algorithm that is very easy to implement. You can compute Zn plus 1 based on, well, Tn, Zn, Zn minus k plus 1, which we all know, right? I mean, so you know everybody on the right hand side, you know f, you can just apply f to everybody you know on the right hand side, you get Zn plus 1, and then you will, you will iterate your process. So if it's an explicit method, it's really easy to do. If it is not an explicit method, then it means you have to solve an equation in Zn plus 1 to find Zn plus 1. So it's a little, you know, it's a, a little bit, uh, it's a trickier in a sense. Okay, so um, that, uh, in that case, it's called an implicit method. It's implicit because you need to solve a solution. You need to solve uh, the equation for Zn plus 1. Now, of course, uh, everybody at this point is thinking, well, why would I bother with an implicit method uh, if I can get an explicit method? And that's a very valid point. I mean, w why would you prefer to solve an equation for Zn plus 1 when you can just uh, avoid doing so and just uh, not having Zn plus 1 and just doing things with Zn to Zn minus k plus 1? Well, the answer is... Uh, we'll see this later in, in, the, in, the, in the, the next videos because uh, the implicit method will be uh, more stable than the explicit uh, method. So, so this is why we will need, we actually sometimes prefer uh, implicit method, even though they're more complicated to, 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 to implement because we have, we have an equation to solve. Let me uh, give you an uh, example. Uh, we, we talked about the Euler forward method in the previous video. So is that a case step method? Is that implicit? Is that explicit? Can we actually uh, connect the dots here and see how this relates to what we discussed earlier? Well, as a reminder, uh, the Euler forward method is z0 equals y0 and then zn plus 1 equals zn plus h f t n z n, right? Okay, so obviously it is a one-step explicit method because Zn plus 1 can be expressed as an F uh, T, Tn, Zn, where Ft is simply, of Tx, is simply X plus H F Tx. Okay? Now, when K is equal to 1, well, implicit methods will always be in the form Zn plus 1 equals Ft, Tn, Zn plus 1, Zn. And explicit methods will always be in the form Zn plus 1 equals Ft, Tn, Zn. Now, when the, when the mesh is regular, in other words, when the, when the step is a constant h, then instead of having this Ft, we can actually be a little bit more explicit, no pun intended, uh, and simply writing ftx as x plus h phi thx. So you see, it's, it, so, so, so if you have a one-step explicit method, then what you will have is simply zn plus 1 equals zn plus h phi tn h zn. So really what you have is phi is really an increment function. How much are you going to increment Zn plus 1, I mean Zn, to, to find Zn plus 1? And very often uh, we choose phi to be continuous with respect to the first two variables, t and ht, uh, and c1 with respect to the variable, the last variable, which, which basically is y. From now on, we will consider k equals 1, so that will be one-step method, but uh, ju just for the sake of simplicity, but everything we do can really be adapted easily to uh, k-step method. So in the next two videos, uh, we will consider k equal 1, uh, and well, next video we're actually going to talk about convergence, and after that we'll see a few methods that are uh, of interest.